Okay, we're back again. Uh, this is, I guess, kind of day three. It's at least video three. Uh, and as you can see here, I have rebased these three figures using cork. And it's topped with uh, Vallejo uh, texture paste or something. Oh, sandy paste. Sandy paste, that's what that's called. Um, and you can see the uh, the push mold that I made yesterday with green stuff. And today I'm gonna shove some more green stuff into there and see if we can make uh, a little mold out of that. There are some holes in it, little tiny holes, essentially where the the nose is pushed through. Not a big deal uh, if I'm pushing something solid into there, but that would make using this for uh, resin pretty much impossible, but that's okay. Not planning to do that. I like how these bases came out and if I add a couple of extra little bits and pieces like, you know, shards from this, I think that'll set it off nicely and they'll be done. Of course, now I feel like I need to add more to the antelope and the lion uh, to keep them similar. Uh, that's fine. And so, actually, let me let me readjust things here. So here we have the Phoenix, which I started last night uh, after finishing up the survivors. And as you can probably tell, uh, once I got to a certain point, I realized that there were still a bunch of uh, seam lines that were overly visible. And so I went back with some liquid green stuff and started filling them in and this is yeah this has been kind of problematic as much as I like this model there are uh, just so many little seam lines where the various points go together and well it's unfortunately more work than uh, I would normally expect for a model like this. But that's okay. Not a big deal. Um, I don't like doing it after I start getting paint on, but, you know, there was nothing for it, so... We're gonna start doing that. As far as colorations go, I believe I'm gonna stay fairly true to the artwork that I've seen, although the artwork has the, the fleshy tones in a gray which I don't really like. Uh, so I'm going to do um, more some subdued standard flesh tones, a little bit, you know, I'll go up a little bit brighter than this and I'll add some washes and stuff to to define it because there's so much nice detail in here that you really want to pull out and then I'm going to need to do something with the little pustules that it has and then pull out the hands. Um, and then the tree that's standing on, I had this mounted to the base and then I realized that the base was going to be a huge pain in the butt uh, for painting the underside, so I pulled it back off. But that's where I'm, that's what I'm going to be starting with today is, is bringing the, you know, getting the color back over the green stuff so that I can kind of get back to where I was last night and uh, and then continuing on with it and I will I will do some reports as I go but as I mentioned yesterday I really am in a in not a hurry but I am concerned about my um, schedule for the rest of this month there's only about 10 days left and I've got a lot a lot of work to do so uh, if I if it seems like I'm skipping ahead a lot I apologize but it's ne it's a necessity so see you in a bit all right, so uh, things have been progressing fairly well. I'm really happy with the state of the overall flesh tone here. And what I've done is uh, a series of layers, kind of going back and forth, dark to light. Uh, so the very first coat was that Joe Sonia Red Brown I mentioned earlier. Then uh, airbrush of... Uh, Flesh 3 for initial highlights. 
Then I washed in the red brown again, just in uh, recess areas. And then I did kind of an overall airbrush in sort of ge more general shadow areas. Then back again with Flesh 3. Then I did another shadow pass with the Violet Transparent. And I think you can still see that in here where it gets kind of reddish and bluish. And then back again with Flesh 3. Uh, and then a final highlight with the airbrush with Flesh 2. And you can kind of see that a little bit here in the knuckles and things. And at that point, uh, I started going back with mostly just thin washes to pick out uh, some of the, you're trying to define some of the shadow areas. Then after that, I went back and started doing the hands, and the hands are mostly brushwork. Uh, and they are tedious. <laughs> don't don't get me wrong. They are super tedious. Uh, and I've been working with the same, basically the same flesh tones. I didn't use any of the uh, the violet transparent. But uh, when I wasn't really happy with the color, I thought it was a little bit too yellow. I started uh, going back over it with uh, a thin coat of flesh four which up to this point I have not used before. Um, it don't, it just, every time I look at it, it's like, eh, that's too pink. Eh, that's too pink. Um, and, and, and in fact, I was never quite sure what I might want to use this for. But as it turns out, it is great in this particular instance of uh, kind of color shifting those hands from a kind of yellowy flesh tone back to something that's a little bit more uh, well, in some in really similar to this, but also it, it sort of gives them kind of a new flesh look as if they are uh, kind of just being born out of the wing there, and I like it. So that was nice. It was nice to finally have a use for that. And um, I got some basic color on the claws. I'm going to start working on them, and then I'll go back to the hands again. Um, and I'm not sure what, oh, hell, after that, I think I might work on the face. There's some eyes. I kind of started picking out the pustules. There's so many tiny details on this that uh, it's, I, I'm getting, I, I'm constantly distracted as I move from one little thing to the next. So uh, I'm kind of not sure exactly how I'm going to proceed. Normally what, what'll happen is, you know, I'll be working with a color. And as I see other things that could utilize that color at that moment, then I will do that. Anyway, I need to get to it. Um, this is uh, this is going to take pretty much all day, pretty sure. So uh, as I get some more progress done, I will come back and share it with you. So things are really moving along now, so much so that it's hard to remember where I was last time I talked to you. Um, but there are some obvious things that you can see that I've done, which, like, for example... The base, I've, I've glued this back down to the base, but uh, I also added some cork to go with uh, those other bases that I created. Uh, also, this looks better elevated slightly uh, than it did just sitting on the base, so that's going to be nice. Uh, I've got his uh, mustachio uh, ready to paint and get on there. Uh, I did his uh, beak on both sides. I haven't painted his beard yet. Uh, and I still need to do his tongue. And I've got a whole bunch of eyes that I need to paint. So I think that's probably next. Uh, I got a base coat on the log that he's standing on. And that's a mixture of uh, a light ochre and gray and that's just my starting point it's probably going to be some washes and dry brushes on there before we're done <clears throat> but it is really moving along and i'm very very pleased 
If you look on the beak, you can see, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit, there are um, a couple of colors going on there. Now the base color on that is uh, uh, Game Air Desert Yellow, and then I used um, the airbrush to feather up some uh, raw umber. Now I wanted to mention this in particular because the um, this Liquitex Soft Body uh, Artist Acrylic, I've got two bottles of this and they're uh, transparent raw umber and transparent burnt umber and I've had them for a number of years because there's a lot here. Two ounces goes a long way when you're just painting uh, hobby models but that both of these colors have been fantastic <laughs> shading colors and even though it's out of the bottle is very thick these thin down amazingly well and you can get a really fine line with them and I don't know what it is about uh, this paint that lends itself to uh, doing fine work but it does and I keep meaning to order some more of these colors so that I can continue to experiment with them uh, but again, I've had these, I don't even know how many years I've had these, but it's been a long time. It's, I'd say it's like a, there's about a third left. Um, and I don't pull them out all the time, which is one of the reasons I have them. But I, the, the more I use them, the more I like them. And so I think they're going to get more use. Uh, they are glossy. So for those of you who like getting your final finish, um, without having to use uh, a matte varnish, you probably want to avoid these. Uh, but I don't care about that because I'm, I'm totally okay with uh, using a matte varnish at the end to get the finish I want. But I know a lot of people are really, really concerned about that. Really concerned about getting the, uh, making sure that none of their finishes are glossy as they as they proceed. So. Um, just something to think about, uh, but it is, this is getting close. This is really starting to get there. I'm very, very happy with where this is. And I still have several hours to work today. Um, I would say at least four hours left today. And there's a reasonable chance that I'll get the figure itself done. Uh, though I doubt the base will be finished because I still need to do, um, I'm still thinking about doing the, uh, uh, the sandy paste treatment over the top of this. Um, and I got my first pull from my mask mold. It's not bad. Um, I pulled it a little bit too early. So I, I lost some of the definition, but it'll still look good cut up and, and you know, put on bases as just extra uh, detail. And I've got another one uh, in the mold curing up right now. But I'm very happy with my progress. Very, very happy with my progress. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Um, this is an exciting piece and I think it'll it's going to photograph really well too. Speaking of which, uh, the other thing I might do is finish up the bases on the survivors and then photograph them tonight. I'm not sure that that's going to happen, but um, I'm I'm eager to have something done with all of the models that I've painted so far. None of them are technically done. Would you stop? This is my cat making noise. One of them. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, I want something to be done. Stop it. Stop. Stop. Uh, so, having said that, I should probably get back to work. And I will talk to you in a bit. Well, I'm about ready to wrap it up for today. Uh, as you can see, I've got a lot of basing work done here. Got started on the bases on Survivors. I even put some uh, texture onto the white lion. So I don't know how much more I'm going to get done tonight, but I think I'm going to wrap up the video at this point. And 
I just want to thank you all for watching, and I will talk to you on the next one.